Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be talking about the strange situation and the different attachment patterns that come along with it. I'm also going to be talking about the possible reasons why these infants express these types of patterns as well as what we can take from these results and what we can expect in the infant's future. Back in 1969, an American psychologist by the name of Mary Ainsworth came up with a new method to study behavior in infants. This procedure focuses on the elements of an infant's behavior that can go unnoticed or misunderstood by those around them as well as their parents. This procedure is referred to as the strange situation. It is used to get a better idea of an infant's attachment style. Something I do want to mention uh, before I get into describing the procedure. The wording can be a little exclusive. They refer to the parental role as mother rather than just parent. So for the sake of inclusivity, the rest of my presentation will refer to them as the parent role. With that said, there are eight steps that make up the strange situation and each of them lasts around three minutes. Those eight steps are step one, the parent, the baby, and the experimenter are in an interesting and engaging room. Step two is the experimenter leaves the parent and the infant alone. Usually during this period, the infant will begin to explore the room and play with the toys that are provided. In step three, a stranger comes into the room and gradually begins to interact with the child while the parent is present and overseeing the situation. In step four, the parent leaves, meaning the child and the stranger are alone together in the room. Depending on the child's reaction to the parent leaving, this step can last anywhere from 30 seconds to three minutes. In step five, the parent returns to the room and then the stranger leaves. In step six, the parent leaves and the infant is alone by itself in the room. In step seven, the same stranger returns to the room, meaning it's just the stranger and the infant during this step. And then finally, step eight, the parent returns and the stranger leaves again. These reactions can be categorized into three, now four, different uh, patterns. Uh, first, there is the secure attachment pattern. This pattern is largely considered to be the normal reaction in layman's terms. Infants who express this form of attachment do so by exploring their surroundings and interacting with the toys that they find. They feel comfortable when they're with their parental figure, but they get upset when their parent leaves. When their parent comes back, they get excited again. This is the most healthy attachment pattern. Second, there is the anxious ambivalent attachment style. Infants who are anxious and ambivalent are usually very needy, but very hard to please. During the steps where the parent leaves, the infant will break down and throw a tantrum. When the parent returns though, the infant remains upset and is very hard to console. Another large aspect of this category is that anxious ambivalent infants can show aggression towards their parents. The third category is referred to as the avoidant attachment style. With the avoidant attachment style, the child won't be very affectionate toward the parent to the point of nearly ignoring them. During the steps where the parent leaves the room, uh, an infant is usually completely and utterly disinterested. And when the parent returns, shows very similar reaction. As with most things in life, improvements can always be made. In regards to the strange situation, the three attachment patterns that I just covered were a great start, but since then, a fourth attachment pattern has been formed. The attachment pattern is referred to as a disorganized attachment pattern, and as the infant grows, if this pattern persists, it is usually referred to as a disorganized controlling attachment pattern. This was initially noticed uh, early on by Ainsworth, but she was struggling to categorize it in an effective way. Through researching, I found that Ainsworth is happy with this new classification, but she wants to make it clear that this is quite an open-ended classification. The initial three patterns are very distinct from one another, so Ainsworth wants to preserve that while allowing for more distinctions within the disorganized attachment pattern to form 
uh, as more studies are performed on the topic. Infants who display this type of pattern are usually characterized as showing fear in their movement. Fearful movement includes jerky movement as well as tensed shoulders. Another characteristic of this pattern is that these exhibitions of fear don't necessarily line up with events that are happening. The way an infant is parented has a huge impact on the type of attachment style that they're likely to be exhibiting. When a parent is attentive to their infant's wants and needs, it's much more likely for the infant to display a secure attachment, while if the parent is distant and uninterested in tending to their child, it's much more likely for the infant to express an avoidant attachment. Children that express these forms of attachment usually show aggressiveness later in life. Similarly, if a parent is treating their infant inconsistently, the infant will express an anxious ambivalent attachment. Anxious ambivalent children usually suffer from anxiety and depression when they get older. And for disorganized slash controlling attachment pattern children, it is likely that the parent is showing unpredictable abusive behavior or other types of behavior that come off as frightening for the infant. Infants expressing this type of pattern are also at a high risk of suffering from personality disorders as well as dissociative disorders. Lastly, I want to say that this isn't a foolproof method of predicting an infant's future. What I mean by that is, the situation that they created is merely a snapshot of a single day in this infant's life. It is highly possible that they were acting strange, pun intended, and that their results won't necessarily be as accurate as possible. This procedure is more so a possible predictor of future attachment patterns and not so much a definitive answer. Thank you for watching.